Inside your body, an army is mobilizing. It's defending its homeland against all invaders. Whether they come by land or by air. Man the barricades as our bodies fend off attack in a hostile environment. Next on Body Atlas. This battle is the closest Graham will ever get to mortal combat. But our couch potato is still a hero. Even on a lazy afternoon, his own body is under siege, fighting off billions of enemies, the parasites, bugs, and germs which surround him. Our bodies have evolved their own lines of defense, a microscopic army of cells with specialist roles they obstruct attackers, destroy invaders, and even repair damage. 20th century living looks easy. Yet without this invisible army of cells, we'd never survive beyond infancy. Spears are only part of his dream world, yet cuts and wounds are a fact of everyday life. Skin is our first line of defense. If it's breached, the body mobilizes its troops instantly for defense and repair. Blood contains all the ingredients of a first aid kit. Here are the key players hugely magnified. Platelets to plug the wound white cells to mop up dirt and debris, and to kill infection. Here's how a cut arm heals, filmed over four weeks. We'd all die young if it weren't for this rapid mending process. Healing starts in our bones. This is where the body manufactures its defense and repair brigade. Bone marrow is the birthplace of specialist shock troops that patrol in the blood. First into action are tiny cells called platelets. They charge through the blood vessels to plug the wound. Without them, we'd bleed to death from the tiniest scratch. At top right is a mass of red blood cells forming a clot. They're trapped in a microscopic network of fibers which form in the blood wherever there's a cut. The clot stops blood from leaking out and germs from getting in. Alerted to the damage, white cells in the blood now move up into the front line. Specialist cells, called mast cells, mobilize to perform a crucial role. They erupt, releasing a chemical called histamine. It dilates blood vessels surrounding the cut and makes them leaky. Vital repair and defense cells can then escape out of the bloodstream into the tissue and penetrate to the site of damage. Among these are the scavengers, special cells which mop up dirt or germs that have invaded the broken skin. Here, a defender literally consumes its enemy. 
These cells and the resulting casualties appear as pus on the outside of the wound. They make a cut look nasty, but it's a sign that the body is being repaired. So too is the scab on the skin surface. Under this protective cover, healing and regrowth can begin. This special cell doing its dance of the seven veils is called a pericyte. It's on its way to a scene of damage. The pericytes knit together to form a sheet of new skin at the surface of the wound. At the same time, skin cells in the deepest layers are stimulated to grow faster, to replace the ones which have been lost. This ball of cells will smooth out to form a new layer of skin. Fortunately for our sleeping beauty, this scene of battle is all a dream. Yet the body is never safe from attack. His luxury home is no sanctuary. It looks clean, yet it seethes with invisible marauders. Inside his cushion, dust mites, here magnified a hundred times. These eyeless monsters share bed and board with even the most fastidious. Curtains and bedding, carpets and soft furnishings all make ideal breeding grounds for the house dust mite. Millions can live in a single pillow. Even a teddy bear can play host to them. Dust mites feed off the dead skin cells that we all shed. They may look cute, but their dung pellets can kill. Breathed in, they can trigger asthma. Dust mite pellets may be the commonest cause of this 20th century scourge. Our modern homes, warm and poorly ventilated, encourage dust mites. Their droppings hang in the air like fine dust. Graham can't avoid breathing them in. He's unaware of the dangers, yet dust mites are not the only creatures sharing his comfy abode. In the woodwork and cushion of an antique chair, there may lurk bed bugs. Birds roosting in the roof also bring lice with them. They get into our homes and feed off us in bed. Our pets, too, carry lodgers, fleas, which also feed off human blood. Cat fleas merely make us itch, but fleas can spread killer diseases, typhus and plague. In the Middle Ages, the Black Death killed one-third of the population of Europe. It was spread by the flea. And even the cleanest human is a bug motel. Tiny lodgers live in the roots of our eyelashes and crowd in the pores around our noses. This is a human mite, hugely magnified. And at the top end of this whisker, another mite slithers round the hair on an afternoon stroll. In the warm air of Graham's kitchen, Millions of even tinier organisms are also looking for board and lodging. Yeasts, fungi, mold, bacteria. We live in a soup of them. They multiply fast on our food and on us. Graham may feel refreshed, but he's still not clean. Soap and water will remove dust and grime. But all this scrubbing still leaves behind billions of yeasts and bacteria, permanent residents of the human skin. This ghostly imprint reveals the colonies of bacteria which survive on your hand and flourish, even after a thorough scrub. <laughs> 